one person who was not with Clinton at either Fuddruckers or FIU, even though both are in his congressional district, was David Rivera. Rivera is the only member of Congress that I know of that has the movie Scarface memorized line for line. But there are a few other things you might want to know about Rivera, so we put together this bit of background. This week, for the second year in a row, David Rivera was named one of the 12 most corrupt members of Congress by a citizen's watchdog group in Washington. A whirling dervish of controversy, the freshman Republican has been the target of numerous local, state, and federal investigations over the past two years. Earlier this year, he avoided criminal charges by the state for misusing campaign funds by finding a little-known loophole in the law. He remains under federal investigation for alleged tax evasion after a secret agreement was uncovered showing how Flagler Dog Track paid a company owned by Rivera's mother and godmother more than half a million dollars in return for Rivera's help passing the 2008 referendum to allow Las Vegas-style slot machines at paramutuals like Flagler Dog Track. Federal agents trace at least $137,000 of that money back to Rivera, and they wonder, did he pay taxes on it? But it's the latest controversy that truly has Rivera scrambling. Just email me, you'll get all your answers. The FBI is now investigating Republican Rivera for allegedly manipulating August's Democratic primary. Among the questions agents are trying to answer, was Rivera secretly behind the campaign of Justin Lamar Sternad, whose main mission seemed to be attacking Joe Garcia, the candidate who Rivera will face in November? Another question, did Rivera secretly funnel campaign money and other resources to Sternad? Allegations of witnesses disappearing and uh, enough odd characters to fill a uh, Carl Hyacinth novel. This latest Rivera tale is quickly becoming an only in Miami story. Now joining me now are the two reporters from the, uh, who have been covering this story from the very beginning. Miami Herald political writer Mark Caputo and Manny Garcia, the executive editor of El Nuevo Herald. Uh, good morning to both you gentlemen. How are you, Jim? I am fine. Thank you seem a little sedate. Are you okay? It's early. It's early in the it's morning. Early. It is. Let's let's walk through this uh, a little bit. Let's start with uh, with you, Mark. Let's let's just sort of walk through the the history of this and and tell us first. Tell us a little bit about who Justin Lamar Sternad was. Is. Uh, he's he's a, a nighttime hotel worker who somehow, despite having very little money in the bank, it appears, and despite having a not a very high income, was able to dump tens of thousands of dollars into his campaign uh, to pay for a lot of mailers. That got us a little suspicious or a little interested. And as we looked at his campaign finance reports, we didn't see any of it reported. And then we were off to the races. So suddenly he's, he's mounting a campaign, but showing no money to where this campaign was being raised from. Yeah, again, this guy's a nighttime hotel worker, and he's a political newcomer. No one had ever heard of him. He's an unknown. And he some, somehow comes up with a very sophisticated campaign where he, he's able to send out about a dozen targeted mailers, well-produced, uh, well-targeted to different segments of the electorate. It's not something that uh, a novice or a first-timer would really do. And it was rather effective. He didn't spend a lot of money, but he got about 11% of the vote. Now, Manny, I know that uh, you being the inquisitive chap that you are, yeah. when, you, when you first heard that there were these mailers going out, I believe you just did the unbelievably, uh, you know, like undercover type thing of just actually going and knocking on the, on the printer's door and going, hey, what happened here? Exactly. Uh, I was reading uh, on election night Mark Caputo's uh, Naked Politics blog. So the next day I went to Rapid Mail and I asked the owner, John Barrera, says, I needed to find out because it doesn't seem like this guy's got a lot of money. How did he pay for the mailers? And Barrera says, well, it's pretty much the entire thing was paid in cash. And I said, now, I'm is just, that unusual? Do, you, do, do campaigns generally yeah, not work on cash? They generally pay by campaign check, so of course. And I made sure you're on the record. He says, yeah, no, I've, of course he paid in cash. So the entire mailing operation, with the exception of really $9,000, was funded in cash. Now, what makes us believe or suspect that there is a link between Sternad and Congressman Rivera? Well, on, on that point, uh, talking to Barrero, I said, so who provided the cash here? And he said there was a woman who was uh, working as uh, Sternad's campaign manager, Anna Allegro. But uh, Barrera was very clear that David Rivera was running the, the operation. And in fact, and there is one instance where he made, makes a phone call and he tells the secretary at Rapid Mail, go outside to the mailbox and get an envelope and take it to your boss where there was like $7,800 in cash. It was David Rivera who made the phone call to the secretary right. saying, check your mailbox, there's $7,800 in cash in there. The secretary and Barrera both said that it was Rivera on the phone directing him to go to the mailbox and bring the cash inside. And then the other link is uh, 
Rivera had called a, a vendor who does, um, who does campaign data named uh, Hugh Cochran and ordered data that ended up being specifically for the uh, Lamar campaign, Stern ad campaign. Now, we reached out to Congressman Rivera. By the way, I don't know if you're aware of this. Today is Congressman Rivera's birthday, and of course, we wish him a happy birthday. We wanted to ask him to come on the show. He, he declined. He did send a statement. I want to put the statement up, at least part of it, what he read, and I'll read it now. Congressman Rivera has never met Mr. Sinad, has never spoken to Mr. Sinad, knows nothing about Mr. Sinad, and has no connection whatsoever to Mr. Sinad or his campaign. This is yet another desperate attempt by Joe Garcia to distract attention from his corrupt history, including his role in filing a fraudulent Tea Party ringer candidate during his failed 2010 campaign. Congressman Rivera will continue to focus on important issues facing our country, such as the needs to improve the economy and create jobs. Now, Mark, I want to go just to that very first line. Congressman Rivera has never met Mr. Sinad, has never spoken to Mr. Sinad, knows nothing about Mr. Sinad. How does that hold up? Well, the information we get suggests that that's not true. Um, the federal government, the FBI, and a federal grand jury are going to be and are examining that very matter right now. So presumably we'll know in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, whether that's the case or not. Now, what exactly, what would the crime here be? Because, or what exactly is the federal government examining? And we should be, make, very, let's make very clear, there's been no accusation of a crime, there's been no charges, nothing of the sort. This is simply an, F, an investigation that is ongoing by the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office. But what is it exactly they're looking at as possible violation? Well, the basic thing is that when you file a federal campaign finance report, you have to be honest. And when Justin Sternad did that, his initial reports were, even by his own admission, wrong because he amended them only after we reported about it. So you cannot willfully and knowingly subvert the elections laws and file false federal campaign documents. Then there's a matter of whether there were uh, illegal campaign contributions exceeding the amount of money that it should be. Um, there's also a matter of whether there was money laundered because we're talking a lot of cash. Now that's where the David Rivera part of it comes in, because filing a fi false financial disclosure form would be an issue for Mr. Ster Sternod, not necessary for Mr. Rivera, mm -hmm. correct? Well, it's a, it's a campaign donation. If it's not reported, then it's, has, it's the illegality. Manny, I want to ask you a question. We, we've just got about a minute or so. It's fascinating to me. Congressman Rivera won't come here. You know, you've seen him where he dodges my questions when I try to get up to him. I know he's done the same thing with reporters for Channel 10, Channel 7. He is more forthcoming on coming on Cuban and Spanish language radio and TV. Do you find that there's sort of a different standard that's being used in terms of uh, who he talks to and what he says? I think there is, for any politician, there is a safe haven on different stations where they're able to have more of their say with very little pushback. And there's, there's been that instance for, for David on some stations where he's been able to just have more of a safe haven to just lay out his case without much pushback. Having said that, I, I will say that there's been a couple of reporters, uh, Bernadette Pardo, a political columnist for us, and Univision Radio, she's been very, uh, fairly strong with him. She has been. And a reporter, Erica Correa from Channel 41, has been strong. So it's a give and take. I mean, some stations, it happens on our, on our in English side, too. But like I say, David has had, is, you know, his position has been that, like you pointed out, and that we're, we're lackeys for the uh, Garcia campaign, which is false. Uh, we're going to be following this, obviously. This is, from my reporting, from your reporting, this is a serious investigation. This isn't something frivolous that the FBI is, is weighing in on. I believe they're taking this seriously, and we'll see how things play out over the weeks and uh, months.